What's up, everybody? It's Justin. Welcome to Live Ask Me Anything, number 87. Week number 87. Way more than 87, right? This is crazy. 87 is a long time. I was thinking about it the other day. I was like, what am I going to do for AMA 100? I don't know. What's AMA 100 mean? That's ridiculous. When technically, 100 and what, 104 would be two years. But that said, there have been some missed weeks, like the three weeks in Norway, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, it's AMA number 87. I don't know how long it's going to go for. I don't know what's going to happen at AMA 100. I don't know what's going to happen at AMA 104. No idea. What's up, everybody? Hey, Judy. Hey, Catherine. Hey, Anna. Hey, Kayla. Hey, Cameron. Hey, Cassie. Hey, everybody. Whoa. Welcome. All right. So tonight, AMA number 87. I don't have a whole lot prepared for you guys, but you did drop some questions to me, which is really good, at ama.iamclovis.com. I'm going to make sure podcast is recording. All good. We're not doing a whiteboard episode this week because I am swamped. Ladies and gentlemen, swamped, swamped in a good way because uh, I got hit with two back-to-back -back interviews with some amazing guests. So today I had a wonderful conversation with Dr. Ken Berry, uh, best-selling author of the book Lies My Doctor Told Me, which is a must-read for anybody, literally anybody. Love that book. Can't even tell you how much I love it. Uh, it's perfect and it's super accessible. What I love about Lies My Doctor Told Me is it's super accessible to anybody, any level of nutrition knowledge, any level of medical knowledge, which let's face it, none of us went into this whole health and wellness game with medical knowledge, right? It's just amazing. And today we have a long, deep talk about experts and credentials and where society went wrong and why the mainstream medical system is so messed up. And we talked about all sorts of wonderful stuff, how crazy YouTube guys like me end up coming out here talking about health and wellness and actually getting, getting people healthy, right? So he's actually super supportive of that, which is really cool because a lot of doctors tend to be anti guys like me, but it's cool. I don't let that phase me. And Ken was just awesome. He was super Super, super kind and generous with his time today. He didn't have a lot of time and uh, actually extended far beyond the time he told me he had available. So great conversation. I don't know when that's going to drop. Um, I'll let you know. And then tomorrow I have a talk with Dr. Anthony J, author of the best-selling book, Estro Generation. Estro Generation is another must read. If you have not read this, particularly if you're a woman, and we actually have a question tonight that's going to have to, that's going to do with this, that has to do with this. Um, if you have not read Estro Generation, if you have kids and you haven't read Estro Generation, I don't know what you're doing. I really don't. I don't know how Extra Generation has not sold like 300 million copies in the U.S. It's it's that important of a book. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. I mean, we've destroyed our environment literally, and like the early the 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 uh, the cases of of early childhood, early onset childhood puberty, and all these crazy things and man boobs and three-year-olds. I mean, it's horrific what's going on with these hormonal imbalances thanks to chemicals and things like that. We'll talk a little bit about that tonight because I had a question come in that's um, pretty interesting. What else we got here? Thank you, Kayla. She's tagging people. Awesome. Always tag people that you want to see these AMAs. Remember, this is on the Clovis Culture Facebook page, which is 100% public. It's different than the private Facebook groups. Uh, if you're not in the private Facebook groups, get in there. Facebook.com slash groups slash Clovis Academy. That is the free one. There's also paid membership groups as well, but you can get into the Clovis Academy for free, and that's private, right? You post things in there, safe space, go in there, talk to other Clovis people, learn about their results, ask your questions. It's really, really great. Uh, what's up? What's up, Deanna? What's up, Laura? What's up, Jackie? Judy, Kayla, Anna, I said, what's up to you guys already? Cool. What do we got here? I'm in Michigan, and the lady in my building is doing Dr. Ken's plan, Small World. I told her she needs to start following you. Yeah, 100%. Uh, Ken and I literally see nutrition the same exact way. Um, that's what's really nice is when I have other doctors that come on the show. Um, I mean, it's, it's always good to get people like, you know, Rob Wolf on the show and, and talk, but there's just something about it. It just because of American culture, when they have doctor in front of their name, it just makes people feel comfortable, warm and fuzzy, right? Even though people have not figured out yet that doctors get zero nutrition training. Ken talks about that in our podcast where he's like, dude, I didn't learn anything about nutrition through all of medical school, nothing. The fact that nutrition has somehow become the responsibility of doctors, that's the fault of society, really. It's just that we ran into chronic disease and didn't know what to do. So we turned to the only people we could turn to, and we happen to turn to people that know nothing about nutrition. I guarantee you I know more than uh, about nutrition than any doctor you've ever met besides functional medicine doctors who have gone out of their way to learn about nutrition like the Ken Berries of the world. Um, what else we got here? Jackie, excited for this interview. Yes, it's wonderful. Both interviews, they're going to be incredible. Uh, I'm just going to say that tomorrow's interview will be incredible because I haven't had an interview not feel incredible yet. So let's see. 
What else we got? What's up, Mike? He tracks all her stuff from Tennessee. He talks to her daily. Yeah, that's exactly how it should be. It's, it's really funny. I have a lot of people. Um, I, I want to talk to you guys about functional medicine doctors, actually, because I have a lot of people that come to me that think they're working with a functional medicine doctor, and they're not. And Ken and I talk about this. It drives me freaking nuts. It drives me up the wall, right? If you have a naturopath, if you have a holistic doctor, you're, you, you're, I had one client that she won't mind me saying this, but she's like, oh, yeah, I work with, I, I work with a functional medicine doctor. I was like, really? Functional medicine doctor? She's like, well, it's my chiropractor's wife, and she's like into nutrition. She also has me on like $300 worth of supplements a month. And I'm like, oh, that's not a functional medicine doctor. Not even a little bit, okay? So, uh, but what, the reason why I bring this up, Deanna, is people get upset because they're like, I can't find a functional medicine doctor in my area. What do I do? And I just send them the search results from IFM.org. You do not need to see a doctor. You don't, like, if you have a broken bone, you need to see a doctor in person. Yes, for sure. But like, I work with, with Dr. Saladino, right? A lady comes to my house and I sit at this kitchen table that I'm at right now and I put my arm out and she sticks a needle in there and she draws my blood and she ships it off to the testing facility and Paul gets those results and then we jump on a Zoom call just like this with technology, ladies and gentlemen, and we go over my blood work. I have it in front of me. He has it in front of him. I get to record the whole call. It's the same thing that I do with my coaching calls. If you guys do a coaching call with me, we're going to talk for an hour. I'm going to record it. You get a video recording. I don't need to be in the same room with you, right? Don't go to some naturopath who's not a medical doctor just because you're like, well, I feel like I just need to see them in person. No, you don't. If I needed to see people in person to heal them, then I wouldn't have over a thousand testimonies, right? I wouldn't have over a thousand success stories if I had to meet with people in an office, you know, just to see them. It just, it doesn't work that way anymore, everybody. Don't feel limited by the people that are in your your immediate area absolutely now of course most places if you don't live in a major city most places where most people live you're not going to have access to a really world-class functional medicine medical doctor within a 150 mile radius of you you know you don't need to drive six hours to see these people guys get that out of your head i get that so much in emails like there's nobody in my area there's nobody in my area i don't care if they're in your area virtually all these functional medicine doctors take phone and online con consultation beautiful, right? All right. So um, as you guys know, this is a traditional ask me anything because I don't have the whiteboard. I don't have a presentation really set up for you guys. I'm just going to be fielding questions. So feel free to, to shoot me comments, shoot me questions, just like Deanna just did telling me about her friend and Dr. Ken Berry. Um, uh, Dr. Ken Berry is going through some stuff right now. His, his clinical practice burned to the ground and his home burned to the ground. Uh, pretty crazy. He, you guys can actually Google that if you want to. Um, nuts. But there is a full-blown investigation could be some gnarly stuff. I don't, know, I don't want to speak out of turn, speak about it. I don't know too, too much about it, but pretty crazy. Um, anyway, so yeah, Tamara, do that. Why not do that? You know, it's, it's funny. Like I see you're even saying that, hmm, maybe I should do that. Why not? I don't understand. Some people are apprehensive. I'm not saying that you're apprehensive to it, but some people are like resistant to that. Like what? My doctor must see me. He needs to hit me on the kneecap with the little rubber hammer thingy. And I need to see my foot kick to make sure that everything's okay. <laughs> no, you don't need any of that nonsense. It means nothing. Okay. So I'm telling you, telling you, jump on this. If you want a good functional medicine doctor, I can't think of a single thing better for you to invest your money in. I really can't. You guys, I've told you this a million times. I'm completely out of the medical system, uh, completely 100% out of it. I have a, a catastrophic plan. If I get hit by a bus, it won't bankrupt me, but that's all that I have. I pay for all my medical stuff out of, out of pocket. You know, that's it. Um, got your name correctly. Awesome. Perfect. <laughs> All right. So let's dive in here. Uh, this is going to bring me to one of these questions I think is really important because I have this conversation coming up with Dr. Anthony J. So it's perfect timing for this question. And a lot of you are going to like this because I know my demographic and I know that most of you are particular people, right? So let me read this question from you. Pretty cool question. It says, don't know if this is a good fit for this session, but as a female, I still feel so betrayed by this non-consensual process called menopause. All around me, in media and in real life, women of a certain age are losing shape, going gray, growing a belly, becoming irritable, getting depressed. Well, why wouldn't you with all this happening? And it takes so much effort to combat it and recover, way more than it did not that long ago. I know this is just one more consequence of modern diet and living, but still, it's a lousy setup for aging. Uh, so I just realized it's not really a question. This is more of a vent. This person is pissed and I don't blame them. I would be pissed too if I was going through this, okay? So let's dig in. I think this is really important for, for, for people to think about is this is multifaceted. Now this person gets it right a lot in this question by saying, 
you know, this does have to do with one more consequence of modern diet and living. Yes, it's definitely modern diet and living. Um, I would say more living, even more so than diet in this regard, and we're going to dig into that. But virtually my entire audience is female. I think at this point, it's actually, there's a lot more males now. I think right now my, my audience is like 75% female. Um, now remember, I'm not a female. I'm not a female, I'm not a doctor, so I'm really no expert here, but I just want to throw this out. This is a multifaceted thing. There's a lot to think about, and I just happen to have thought of some of it in previous AMAs. I did everything in your house is killing you. I did uh, hormones, finding the balance. We did thyroid, a second opinion. I did depression, a second opinion, all these things. So I've really dove into women's health quite a bit, particularly I always recommend the book A Mind of Your Own by Dr. Kelly Brogan. Can't recommend that highly enough. Definitely, definitely read that if you're a female. I read it, so you should take the time to read it as well, right? So, but the first thing I want to bring up is birth control. Now, again, the person that asked this question, they may have never taken birth control in their life. Maybe not, okay? But it's still worth mentioning because for the rest of the audience. So I've talked about this in previous AMAs. Over 100 million women worldwide are on birth control. This particular active ingredient in birth control, it's called EE2. This is an estrogenic, right? It's an estrogenic compound. But so many women are on this that it accounts for over 60% of married women globally. 60% of all married women in the known universe <laughs> are on this birth control pill, okay? This EE2. So, this is 100% going to lead to problems. It's not a matter of like if, it's a matter of when. This is going to lead to problems. This is something incredibly unnatural for the human body. I get that birth control was amazing. Women were able to go to work and go to school and do all these things. When this first came out, this was a miracle drug when this was first introduced to mankind, right? But it's also responsible for everything from mood disorders and depression to compromised kidney function, pancreatitis. I mean, your hair falling out unscheduled bleeding, uncontrollable weight gain. Like it's just, it's ridiculous. The side effects are staggering. In, in the episode of Hormones Finding the Balance, I list off, I list off um, symptoms or, or, you know, possible side effects of birth control for like 10 minutes. I'm just sitting there like reading a list of these horrible symptoms, right? And one of the big ones is infertility after discontinuation, which is often permanent. You may end up permanently infertile um, for taking this birth control, right? Which is also something that happens with menopause, right? So we start to think about it. It's, it's very similar. So there's that. There's the birth control thing, which in my opinion plays a huge role in the severity of these hormonal imbalances as women age, just being out of control, the symptoms being worse than they've ever been in history because we've now had birth control as a solid part of our culture for many, many decades now. So a lot of women are dealing with this, as we said, 100 million women globally, right? Now, again, this is particularly good timing to talk about estrogenics with Dr. Anthony J coming on the show. So this person that asked me this question, maybe email me some questions and I'll ask him to, to Dr. Anthony J because he's just a wealth of information. The book is fantastic. We'll dig into that too. But a lot of this whirlwind of menopause, what you have to understand is that you're dealing with an estrogen dominance, right? So these, these ovulations begin getting, you're skipping ovulations, which means lower progesterone, and then you have too much estrogen and not enough progesterone. This is what you guys have probably heard the term before of like estrogen dominant. You can be slightly estrogen dominant or you can be crazy estrogen dominant, et cetera, et cetera. This is something that does actually happen naturally in the body at like, you know, 42, 45, whatever age this stuff starts. And the side effects of this are no joke. I mean, there, there, are, there are literally women pretty regularly. I don't know if you guys have ever heard this, but there are women that are pretty regularly like, like institutionalized for things like bipolar that are actually just misdiagnoses because the person's going through premenopause, but the mood swings and shifts and their behavior and everything is just so off the charts crazy that they literally get institutionalized. That's how bad it can be, right? So the other part about this question that the that the that this person said that I think is, is kind of cool is they said it used to not take so much effort just a short while ago in human history. She's saying like to, to correct some of these things used to not be so hard, it's way harder now, right? But you have to understand, the way that we've been living our life right now as a society, it's really like 60 years old. That's it. I mean, some version of us has been around for 4.5 million years, right? We've been living this particular way for 60 years or so. You know what I mean? It's, it's great. Like the chemicals that we have in our products are everywhere. This is very new to human history. And Dr. J and I will talk about this in depth tomorrow. But you have to understand that everything from your deodorant to the makeup you wear to your shampoo and conditioner to your fabric softener to your dish detergent, everything in your house is killing you, right? This is what I did, the, the episode called Everything in Your House is Killing You. 
all these things, even your sunscreen, I mean, your drinking water, the water you drink every day is loaded with estrogenics. It's insane. We've really seriously polluted the world. It's, it's a really bad thing. So, I mean, it's to the point, it's so bad that estrogenics show up in drinking water tests in every single region of the United States at this point, every single region. Not only that, but they've done these lab tests where when they do these drinking water tests, it's enough estrogenics are showing up in the water that would cause literal reproductive organ damage in humans. Like these are the levels that we're dealing with. It's crazy. At this point, they've even tested the livers and brains of sea creatures, like dolphins, sea otters, manatees, whales, all that kind of stuff in the ocean. And they find extremely high level of estrogenics. These estrogenics don't exist in the natural habitat of these animals, which means we have these estrogenic compounds in our water and the water runoff and the soil and all the things that get into the ocean or waste that we dump into the ocean, or again, plastics, all these BPA plastics that we dump into the ocean. It's actually putting estrogenics into the ocean, getting the brains and livers of these animals, right? Glyphosate is literally in the water supply at this point. There's a grass fed farmer here that I talked to who's pissed off because a farm near him in Tennessee is growing soybeans and they use glyphosate. And he's like, well, what the frig? Now he's got to worry about glyphosate getting into his water supply. He's going to buy new water filtration systems and all this stuff for his pasture raised cows. He's doing it right, you know? So uh, I guess to answer the question of this estrogen dominance thing, estrogenics literally mimic estrogen in the body. So the problem is you're going into menopause or premenopause. This is an estrogen dominant state. And then for most of you, you're going to be dealing with estrogenics in your daily life, in your daily environment. Everything from makeup, again, makeup, deodorant, uh, even lavender essential oil, guys. Lavender essential oil is a serious phytoestrogen clinically studied to cause problems with your hormonal balance. This is lavender. Women are sniffing this to go to bed at night there. It's in their soap. It's in their every essential oils. All essential oils are great. Look, nothing is blanket statement, good or bad. So sure, there may be beneficial essential oils. Lavender ain't one of them. Stop putting lavender on freaking everything, ladies and gentlemen. And Dr. Anthony J has extensive, uh, he has posts about this online on his Instagram and everything, like what estrogen does to, I mean, not estrogen, what lavender does as an estrogenic to children. It's really, really scary, okay? So the other thing to think about is the, the symptoms of menopause are eerily close to the symptoms of these estrogenic compounds, okay? Because it's just... Again, pushing your body into a deeper estrogen dominance. Now, what's really scary here is you can't really turn to your doctor for this. So I, I, I shared this with you guys in the groups recently that my mom at 60 years old just had her first uh, consultation with a functional medicine doctor. It's taken me that long to get her to, to agree to the cost of switching to functional medicine and it just made my heart super happy. But part of the reason why she finally agreed is because she had a shit doctor who just threw her on estrogen when menopause happened, she says, yeah, you just need estrogen. Here you go. So they just gave her supplemental estrogen for something that is caused by estrogen dominance. And it just made things worse, right? So the problem is like with your conventional primary care physician, they might test your estrogen levels. If you're lucky, that's usually it. If you're super lucky, they might test your estrogen and progesterone levels just to prove estrogen dominance, right? But it is incredibly rare that you will receive a full hormone panel, that you'll get like a full thyroid panel with like TSH and free T3 and reverse T3 and T4, all these numbers that you really need, your estrogen, your progesterone, your testosterone. You need to test your testosterone as a woman. You absolutely need the whole picture, a holistic picture of your hormonal health, your hormonal, hormonal balance, right? Now, I've said this before in, a in AMAs that particularly for people over 40, I have zero problem with bioidentical hormone replacement. In fact, I, I highly recommend it, right? Particularly because you're living in a society, in a culture where like everything is against you. Well, we, we just talked about all these estrogenic compounds, right? You might need some help because society is so screwed right now from all these phytoestrogens and estrogenics. So you might actually need some help. Bioidentical hormone replacement is not a bad idea. When I'm 50 years old, I guarantee you 100% I will be taking testosterone injections. By the time I'm 50, there'll be some new magical thing that makes my levels all perfect. Um, but I'm telling you, if it were, if I were 50 right now, I'd be taking testosterone injections. I don't want the testosterone levels of a 50 year old man. I want the testosterone levels of a 25 year old man. That's what I want when I'm 50, right? So women, you should be taking advantage of this. A lot of women could actually feel a lot better with supplemental testosterone. 
Believe it or not, we forget that women still need testosterone. Sure, they need one-tenth of the testosterone that a man needs, but this still plays a vital role. So steroid hormones are very, very important, right? But again, the issue is these conventional doctors, they're not going to test enough blood markers. They won't get the whole picture. They might throw you on just estrogen like they did with my mom and make things worse, right? So you need a true expert. Again, this is where I tell you to get a functional medicine medical doctor. This is somebody with a medical degree and preferably get somebody that actually has a specialty and a lot of experience in endocrinology, period. Never ever go to a naturopath or your chiropractor or something like that and start taking hormonal advice from them and start taking all their standard process $400 a month worth of supplements. Don't do that shit, right? You will wreck yourself, I'm telling you. So anyway, this answer is absurdly long. I just realized I'm ranting about this. If you guys wanna chime in here, let me know your thoughts on this stuff. Um, I'm glad to dig in. Um, but if I could break it down, really, I mean, I would buy the Clovis Approved Products ebook. Um, go to IamClovis.com, click the little three little lines and click shop and go to ebooks and grab the approved products list and just remove all estrogenics from your home immediately and remove them from your diet as well. Namely, soy products, everybody. Stop with the soy bullshit. It's terrible. Can't think of anything worse for your diet than soy, right? So anyway, get rid of the estrogenics, get rid of the phytoestrogens, uh, get the toxic chemicals out of your house, all these things, remove these things that could be adding to estrogen dominance, get yourself a good functional medicine medical doctor, consider bioidentical hormone replacement, and I mean, your life can just get a lot better. If you just did those things, just removed the products from your home and got yourself a good functional medicine doctor, bioidentical hormone replacement can be an absolute game changer, it could really change your quality of life. Stop the you know, hot flashes in the middle of the night and being cold and then hot and all the stuff that comes along with these unpleasant experiences of hormonal imbalance. So do yourself a favor and just look into some of this stuff, you know? So I hope that was, uh, that was helpful. Jackie, no experience with menopause yet, but I forgot how much of a hormonal crapshoot postpartum is too. Also, the first thing they ask you at your OB post-delivery checkup is what form of BC you want to start immediately. Exactly. We have talked about this. I mean, I've had clients that were put on birth control at 13 years old for headaches. Interesting. So that doctor has never heard of sodium, potassium, and magnesium. Hmm. Zero understanding of electrolytes, but we'll put you on a birth control pill when you're 13 for headaches, right? I told you guys this before. My, my sister is, is gay and she was put on birth control by her doctor. She missed her period by like two days or something. The doctor's like, here's some birth control for you. What are we talking about? It's insane, absolutely insane, right? Artina, yes, saliva tests, kind of. I am a blood test guy. I am absolutely a blood work guy. I know that there's things like the Dutch test and stuff that can be helpful. I, I am a blood test guy, and every, you know, worth their weight in gold functional medicine doctor that I know are blood work people, 100%. So something like the Dutch test could be used in unison, I guess, with blood work, but I, I really, really would want you to get your hands on a, you know, again, the saliva test, it's very easy to order and get sent to your house, and there's a reason why that is. That's that's why naturopaths use it and chiropractors use it. They're like, yeah, I, you don't need a doctor. I can test your hormones. We're gonna do a saliva test and test your hormones, then I'm gonna give you all these supplements that you can take, blah, 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 right? Like, no, you, you want a true blue functional medicine medical doctor, an MD, and you want to get a hormone panel done that is blood work. You want full blood work hormone panels. Mark my words on that, I'm telling you. If you get in with a really good functional medicine doctor, they're gonna tell you the same thing. I know there are functional medicine doctors who use Dutch tests as well, but blood work is the gold standard, always. So. Make sure that you're doing this right. You do not want to mess around. Yes, okay, perfect. I also do blood work. Absolutely. You can use it in unison, and you don't want to guess on hormones. That's the other thing. Artina, sounds like you're in good hands, but any of you out there that are like, don't go buy a Dutch test, do it yourself, and grab like over-the-counter DHEA from Amazon or something. Like, Don't try to do this stuff. You need a professional. Suck it up. Pay the money. I guarantee somewhere in your life you're spending money on something dumber than this. <laughs> I promise you, right? So what else we got? So I look for functional medicine on website. Closest is 100 plus miles away. Yeah, Crystal, we just talked about this. I, I, I opened the whole episode with this. They don't need to be anywhere near you. Just pick someone that does online consulting. Your doctor doesn't need to touch you. They really don't. Unless you're dealing with some significant, like you got a broken bone or something, right? They might, why do they need to touch you? They don't. You don't need, do it online. I'm telling you, 
Just go with the highest credentialed, best reviewed functional medicine medical doctor that holds a medical degree. Get the best one you can find. Do that advanced search on the ifm.org website to find your practitioner and do an online consultation. You don't need a doctor to be near you. Do not worry about that at all. What else we got here? Okay, so uh, this one's a little bit different. We're going to swing things in a little bit of a different direction, which is cool. Um, I had a question actually last week. This came up, so I saved it. I bookmarked it and made sure because I promised them I was going to answer this question. Um, but last week I ranted. As you guys know, I got an AMA number 86. Uh, it was called No, Your Brain Does Not Need Carbohydrates, which I stand by 100%. And uh, what was crazy is I actually talked to Dr. Ken Berry about it that this registered dietitian attacked me for my stance on the brain not lead, not needing dietary carbohydrates, which is 100% true. I am correct, and it is irrefutable, actually. Um, and he said that the rate of obesity, the rate of obesity among registered dietitians in America is higher than the rate of obesity in the standard population. Let me repeat that for you, ladies and gentlemen. The obesity rate among registered dietitians in America is higher than the obesity rate of the standard population in America. What? What are we doing? And these are the people that are like, you need 130 grams of dietary carbohydrates for your brain to function properly. No, you need 130 grams of dietary carbohydrates for your sugar burning taste buds that you want to eat while you're watching TV at night. Registered dietitian, okay? Cut the shit. But anyway, what do we got? Oh, okay. Uh, Judy's talking about hormones again. It had taken me four years to fix my hormonal levels, and we are still tweaking the estrogen through a functional medicine doctor. Perfect. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, Crystal, no problem. Totally cool. I didn't know if you were here in the beginning or not, but uh, yeah, don't worry. I get that all the time. Everybody comes to me. They're like, dude, there's nobody anywhere near me that you don't need it at all. Go back, watch the beginning, like the first uh, you know, three to five minutes of this episode where I talk about that at length, where um, unless you're in a major hub like Nashville, even Nashville, there's like maybe a handful of functional medicine doctors out here. And um, you know, some of their practices aren't up to par, in my opinion, right? That's the thing is like, you, there's no way you can guarantee that a functional medicine doctor, but I also want you guys to understand this, no matter where you are, if you don't have a functional, a good functional medicine MD in your area, I guarantee you, you don't have a good conventional primary care physician in your area either. Nothing is dumber, okay? I don't want to insult anybody. I don't mean this to be insulting. Uh, it's just you're, you're, you've been misled. You're part of a broken system. Nothing is dumber than saying, let me find a doctor and going to your insurance company and saying, who's in my network and close to my house? Mm. Worst criteria ever for finding somebody that you're gonna put in charge of your health. That's staggering to me. I can't even, oh my God, it makes my blood boil, right? So anyway, uh, just, yeah, Crystal, so no problem. You're here later. Googling recipes, C. Tahini used a lot, uh, ground sesame. Honestly, the best advice I can give you here, don't mess with recipes, don't. I, I try to teach people this. Everybody that starts a meal plan or, a, well, not a meal plan, Clovis is not a meal plan. I don't give you a meal plan for a reason, right? People come to things like Clovis, and they literally say, I need a meal plan. I need recipes. Where are the recipes? I need the rest. No, you don't. You need to understand how to cook for yourself. That's it. You do not need recipes, okay? Go buy coconut aminos, and, uh, coconut secret coconut aminos, and buy sea salt. All done. That's all you need for the rest of your life. I promise you. Those are just the only things in my house that I cook with. I use zero condiments ever. When I cook, I heat up a skillet, and the skillet gets hot, and I throw some meat in there. If I want some veggies, I put a steam pot on a, a steam basket, boil some water, throw some veggies in there. Might cut open half an avocado and then put it all on a plate. All done. That's it. And I don't, I really don't care. I know that sounds boring to people because your taste buds are used to crappy standard American diet, mouth pleasure all the time, right? But you're really trying to retrain your taste buds in the beginning more than ever. Don't focus on recipes. Don't be making yourself Clovis approved desserts for the first 30 days. Don't be making yourself big fancy paleo recipe this and keto recipe that and I need Tahiti and I need all this stuff. You don't. The simpler, the better. The simpler, the better. I'm telling you. And then if, if you can do that, you can do anything for 30 days, I promise you. And then at the end of 30 days, you can go try some of these fancy recipes and be like, I don't need all this taste in my mouth. What is all of this sweet bullshit? You know, like I'm telling you, you need to get back to basics. 
Get back to the basics of being a human being that eats whole foods. That's it. That's all that I care about. That's the best advice I can give you is keep it simple, okay? Absolutely simple. Judy, how do you know they are truly an FM doctor? Because you go to ifm.org and you do the search criteria and click advanced search. And you can actually select all the criteria. Must have a medical degree, must be an MD, must have experience in endocrinology, must have experience in nutrition, must be an IFM certified practitioner. Use the advanced search option. That's it, you have to, this has to be registered. You have to go through IFM to do this, 100%. Don't go, no, because there's a lot of people that will call them some, like there are people that say, I'm a functional medicine holistic doctor or I'm a functional medicine holistic practitioner. Sounds really fancy, they're liars. They are manipulating you. So you can't trust them, trust these certifications. You want an IFM certified practitioner that holds a medical degree. You can ask them where their medical degree is from, you can ask them when they went to school. You need a certified functional medicine practitioner through ifm.org. That's why it's the only website I ever share is ifm.org to find your, your practitioner, okay? So this next question, um, is a little bit different. If you guys have questions about functional medicine or anything like that, we can keep going. We can keep uh, chatting on this as long as you want when we do these AMAs where I really, I actually really want to focus on your comments and make sure you guys are getting everything that you want out of this for sure. So the, uh, the next, I'll move on to the next question then we'll see if you guys pop in with any comments or anything. The next question is about sauna. If you guys are interested in sauna, I, you guys know I'm a huge fan of sauna. I have a sauna 20 feet away from me in my garage right now. I've already been in the sauna today. I love sauna. Um, have switched up my routine a little bit with sauna and I'm going to explain that to you now. Um, so what had happened was I did an Instagram post from the sauna and then I did a, I think I did an Instagram video from the sauna or whatever, uh, post-workout. So this particular person asked me about sauna and what he said is, what are the benefits of the sauna post-workout? I have a steam room and a cold tub that I have access to post-workout. Is there any guidelines for optimizing your post-workout sauna slash cold exposure routine? Yes, 100%. Now the thing is, right off the bat, to answer the question, sauna in active individuals, this is actually clinically proven in scientific studies. Sauna in active individuals, which I would call myself an active individual, healthy human metabolism, I'm a very healthy guy, right? It's clinically proven to enhance mitochondrial activity in the cells. Basically, it's almost like a supercharged version of autophagy, like rapid autophagy, right? So we talk about autophagy a lot in terms of intermittent fasting or prolonged fasting. Everybody's always like, how long do I need to fast for before autophagy begins? And we don't really know the answer to that. It's probably somewhere between 18 and 48 hours. It's really like that big of a range before autophagy starts happening. Maybe if you're super fat adapted, like I'm super fat adapted. I know this from genetics testing, blood work, everything. I am super fat adapted. I burn fat 100% of the time, basically. Um, so I know that, um, I'm just constantly in that state. So it's very, very beneficial for me to do these kinds of hormetic stressors like mitochondrial activity. So autophagy for me is very easy to get into, like in terms of 16 hours, my glycogen is probably depleted from my liver. I'm in fat burning mode, whatever. So anyway, long story short, it can be like 16 to 48 hours really that you're looking at for autophagy, um, before autophagy begins. But there are other things that impact autophagy, tons of things that impact autophagy. I mean, even literally drinking black coffee can initiate cellular autophagy. So sauna is one of those things. It's basically in the in the episode I did called, um, uh, what was it called? Stress sucks. I did an AMA called stress sucks that was all about stressors, right? Talk about stress and stressors. So sauna is a hormetic stressor. It's a stress on the body that forces the body to adapt in a way that is beneficial from a health version. Now, basically what sauna is doing is it's telling weak cells to F off and die, right? Get out of here, you're weak, we don't want you. You are the weakest link, goodbye, right? Get rid of you. So it's actually, that's what autophagy is doing. Autophagy is like, apoptosis is really programmed cell death, but autophagy is causing cells to rebuild themselves with new parts, like as if they're new younger cells. So another way to think of this is like a teeny tiny version of chemotherapy, right? Now, nobody is gonna argue that chemotherapy is good for you or beneficial in any way. Like you're already in a disease state. It's like, hey, we got nothing to lose. Let's try this, right? But what you're doing is you're putting a tremendous stress on the body that healthy cells should be able to withstand. It kicks their ass too, but they should be able to survive it while these malfunctioning cells die off. 
That's the idea. Now, if we could, if we had super pills or things that could go on the body and make sure that we only target the six cells, chemotherapy would work much better. Um, ketosis has been proven to help with that. Hyperbaric oxygen chambers have been shown to help with that. Fasting has been shown to help with that. Fasting actually helps. A 48-hour fast before chemotherapy actually makes the healthy cells withstand chemo and makes the malfunctioning cells even more prone to death by chemotherapy. It's really fantastic. There's a ton of data around this. Pick up the book, uh, Tripping Over the Truth, the Metabolic theory of cancer. It's absolutely incredible. Um, so anyway, chemo is not good for you. I'm just trying to help you understand what these hormetic stressors do, right? So to get to the rest of the question, this is where we run into the problem of average people emulating athletes. I always have a problem with this, all right? I'll post a picture of PETA, my MMA fighter. She's like this, right? And she's got eight pack, you know, shredded 12 pack abs. She's like 3% body fat and half dead, right? And all these women are like, I want to look like PETA. And I'm like, no, you don't. I'm working with a professional athlete. She gets paid for this. This is her job. This is terrible for her. Not good for her body. She's doing better than the rest of the fighters because she has me on her side to do it in the most healthy way possible. But these are professional athletes. So what will happen is people see like NBA players play a basketball game and then they're interviewing them in the locker room or NFL and they're interviewing them in the locker room. And you see people like in ice baths. So all of a sudden you got all these people that are doing intense exercise or really – for most, let's, let's be honest, most people are not intense exercisers, right? They just aren't. So, um, but most people do like normal run of the mill exercise. And then they're like, oh, I saw LeBron James in an ice bath. I need to take an ice bath. No, these professional athletes do these practices simply so they can function the next day. They're not trying to like get bigger biceps or get bigger pecs or whatever. They're, they're beating the hell out of their bodies day in and day out during the season. And it doesn't matter if they're sore or injured or hurt, they have to go out and do it all over again the next day, whether they like it or not. It's their profession, right? These are why these things are happening post-workout. For normal people, if you're looking for like fun or optimal health or whatever, like you want bigger biceps or whatever, cold after workouts is not the way to go. It actually blunts the hormetic response of exercise. So if you're doing a workout, particularly like resistance training or something where you're trying to build muscle and repair tissues, you should wait at least 90 minutes post-workout to take a cold shower or do an ice plunge or anything like that, at least 90 minutes. So another analogy of this is like Tylenol. People get a, a slight fever and they take Tylenol. I got to get that fever down. That's dumb, everybody. The fever is a perfectly natural response. Again, an adaptive response by the body trying to fix a root cause going, okay, we need to fix this. We're going to raise our body temperature for a little while. We're going to create an environment in the body for healing, to heal the root cause of something. Or parents, their kid get like a two degree fever and the parents are shoving baby Tylenol in their mouth every few hours. Give this to your kid every four hours to keep suppressing the fever, suppressing the fever, suppressing the fever. What you're doing is you're making the root cause last longer. Don't do that to your children. Okay. Don't do that. It's not let the body do its thing. Yes. If your kid has a 150 degree fever and is going to die, you bring him to the hospital. You do what needs to be done there, you know, but kids running a slight fever. Don't throw Tylenol in their mouth. That's the same thing as doing an ice cold plunge after like a heavy resistance training workout. You're going to stunt, uh, you're going to blunt the hormetic response and actually not get the same recovery that you would want to. Sure, you might be a little less sore the next day, but that means you could go out and perform again if you were a professional athlete, but odds are most of you listening to this are not a professional athlete, okay? So post-workout cold, it actually doesn't make a lot of sense. Again, you're blunting the body's natural healing response. So in my opinion, for post-workout recovery and benefits, heat is undoubtedly the way to go, and the clinical data backs this up. Like I said, it enhances mitochondrial activity in the cells. The heat shock proteins that are activated from sauna actually create a favorable environment in the body for recovering tissue. So again, this is particularly beneficial if you're trying to build lean muscle, you want bigger muscles, you're trying to increase overall strength, or if you have a rest day the next day, like you do really heavy powerlifting workout, and then hit the sauna for 20 minutes after, and then take a rest day the next day, oh man. In terms of uh, hypertrophy, like getting your muscles bigger, like that's a fantastic combination for hypertrophy, right? So if I had to pick like an ideal scenario for, this could be like guy or girl. If I had to pick like an ideal scenario for somebody just trying to get like an athletic physique, right? If you want like an athletic physique, you want some muscles, right? You want some of these glamour muscles or whatever. You want a little bit of that. You want to be strong and fit and healthy, all those things. Then what would be like a great protocol is two to three times a week 
um, heavy resistance training, maybe something like a five by five, like five by five would be great. So let's just say you do the five by five program. Let's say Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you're doing resistance training, barbell resistance training, right? So you can do the five by five program three times a week and immediately post-workout do 20 minutes of sauna, 20 to 40 minutes, depending on the type of sauna, if it's infrared or finished sauna or whatever. Um, if it's infrared, you want to go a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, if you were just to do like heavy resistance training two to three times a week, finish the heavy resistance training with some time in the sauna, 20 minutes, 40 minutes, whatever, and then just take a normal shower, whatever. Later on at night, if you want, before bed, you can do a cold shower or whatever, but don't do it after the workout. So just heavy resistance training, 30 to 45 minutes, and then 20 minutes in a sauna, three times a week, you will be shocked by what happens to your body. You'll be absolutely shocked by what happens to your body. It'd be wildly beneficial. Now, the other thing to be clear about here is like, we're just assuming I'm just assuming now you're listening to me that this person is following a proper nutrition protocol to support that level of training or whatever, right? I'm just going to assume your nutrition's right. If your nutrition is right and you do those things two to three times a week, heavy resistance training with sauna afterwards, that's an incredible thing to do. And if you want to, if you want to dive deep on this, Rhonda Patrick uh, just was, she does Found My Fitness. She has FoundMyFitness.com and the Found My Fitness podcast, and she released this incredible podcast about um, sauna therapy, it's, it's amazing. And she talks about, um, I think it's, I wanna say it's in clinical studies, you could you could get in the sauna one time. So this is another, another great thing because most people come to me with like hypertension and things like that. You could sit in the sauna one time and lower your blood pressure. Actually lower your blood pressure and increase heart rate variability in a single sauna session. And then they have people who do sauna like three to seven times a week or four to seven times a week and there's a 50% lower risk of fatal heart disease, there's 40% lower risk of all cause mortality. Ladies and gentlemen, all cause mortality is literally like death by anything, decreases by 40%. I know that the numbers for Alzheimer's, I've actually been talking to my mom about this because I have a sauna in my house and she lives up the road. There's a 60% decreased risk of Alzheimer's disease with regular sauna, like four to seven times a week. These findings are staggering. It's unbelievable. And the crazy thing about it is that some of these benefits seem to come from the fact that sauna is exercise mimicking. Like it actually mimics physical exercise to the point where if you're in the sauna for long enough, you can easily get your heart rate up to like 150 beats per minute. That's like moderate intensity aerobic exercise, right? So for someone like me, like I have to run to get my, my heart rate to 150 beats per minute. Like I have to actually run. If I walk, my beats per minute would be ridiculously low. My resting heart rate's like 44, you know? So it's like, I would have to like actually run to get my heart rate to 150 beats per minute, or I can sit completely still in a box in my garage and get to 150 BPM. This literally mimics physical exercise without any of the downsides. Because as you guys know, I hate cardio. I am not a fan of cardio. I hate it. I am not a fan of running. I hate it. And I'm not just saying for myself, I dislike it. I don't like running for anybody. Okay. And plenty of people disagree with me on this. Plenty of people swear that running is good for their mental health and running is good for this. And it's good for cardiovascular, blah, blah, blah. I disagree. Why? Because of our environment. If you come to me and you say, I'm wearing Vivo barefoot shoes and I'm running a football field in grass and I'm doing aerobic threshold training where I'm like lightly jogging or whatever, then I'll be like, cool, that sounds like a wonderful way to run. But nobody does that in our culture, right? You're wearing these big padded shoes with heels and you're heel striking and you're running on pavement. Even if you're running in barefoot shoes, sure, you're striking on the ball of your feet, but now you're running on pavement. It's damaging your joints. There's nothing good about that. Nothing good, okay? You're punishing your body. I am not a fan of running. And again, that's just my opinion. Plenty of people are going to disagree with me. But right now, I just, the risk versus reward is so ridiculously lopsided. I can't get behind running regularly multiple times per week for anybody. I want to be clear about that. None of you will ever come to me and I will ever tell you to run. It's, just, it's not going to happen, right? It's absolutely not. We could talk about aerobic threshold training or something like that. But when you come to me and you're in need of aerobic threshold training, you're going to be walking to hit those numbers. Walking right? Most of what we see around us is pavement. There's no reason for you to be running on that. It makes no sense from a biological perspective. You are not evolved to do that. Don't run on pavement. It is stupid, okay? Don't do it. So for me right now, 
I like to do either like some really solid lifting, maybe some barbell lifting. I haven't really, really been doing a lot of that uh, lately or some kettlebells. Like I swung kettlebells today, did just simple and sinister kettlebells, which I love, one of my favorite programs of all time. Right now, it's mostly calisthenics for me, mostly calisthenics and gymnastics workout, body, body weight stuff, uh, gymnastics rings, that kind of thing. And then I like to hit the sauna for 20 minutes. So I've been training like an hour a day, really, um, unless I do kettlebells. Kettlebells is like 20 minutes, you know, because it's just so brutal. Um, but calisthenics, I'm usually doing hour long workouts and then doing sauna for like 20 minutes or whatever. Um, and I'm really, really loving that. Like it's, it's my new routine. I love it. The song is beautiful. I think it's going to be my new routine that I stick to for, for quite some time. I really do. So, uh, what do we got here? Travis, all the proteins. Yes. Oh, did sauna light therapy and chiropractor this afternoon. It will cure any sinus headache right away. Yeah. Uh, sauna light therapy can be pretty cool depending on what he had to do. And it's probably some form of like juve light therapy, either, uh, near or far infrared if I had to guess. And what else we got here? Thank you. Sure thing. I like walking. Walking's great. Artina on point. Jeff is sitting here with me and you are so on point. This is our world. He has taken your advice as well as I and the health change has been like over the top. We have an infrared working it out with resistance, cooking beef liver, as you say. We just want to thank you for what and who you are. We even trust you with our kids. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. And that really means the world to me. Thank you for trusting your health and your family's health to me. It means the world. That's why I do this. It makes me, made my heart very happy. Thank you for telling me that. And um, yeah, speaking of which, I, I, I think it's worth noting here that, you know, as you guys know, my, Clovis, Clovis is me sharing my journey with you guys. That's, that's really all, all that it is. So what I want to share with you is that I'm actually... I've been really going back and forth with this and I have a guy coming on the podcast. I'm going to tell you about in a second, but, um, I've switched almost exclusively to calisthenics training and kettlebell training. And I have not done like a barbell squat. I haven't done a barbell squat like in weeks. And, and there's a reason for that. I'm really rethinking things. I actually might sell off part of my gym. I mean, I have a lot going on with my home being an Airbnb and I need to buy a new house anyway. And, so I've been shopping for a new house and figuring out what am I going to do with my gym. I got this, you know, 450 pounds of weights and a squat rack and all this stuff in the gym. But, you know, I think I'm at a point, I'd be, I've gotten so enamored with this calisthenics bodywork stuff that I think I'm at the point where I may be taking a very long hiatus from traditional powerlifting. And it may be for a very long time. I, I don't know how long it's going to be, but, you know, I share my journey with you guys. That's what Clovis is. I tell you, I don't think I'm an expert in anything. I share my journey with you so you can avoid some of the obstacles and pitfalls that I've run into along the way. And the fact of the matter is I have lived my life as a meathead at this point for 18 years. I mean, I started bodybuilding lifting when I was 15 years old, right? And I went from bodybuilding to P90X, to insanity, then I was a boxer in college, then I was a crossfitter, then I was a power lifter, then I worked with Olympic lifters. I, when I say I work with Olympic lifters, I worked with people who were in the Olympics, <laughs> and I trained Olympic lifting four times a week, right? While I was a jiu-jitsu practitioner, then I worked with the strong first guys to get kettlebell training, and on and on and on, and without fail, I hurt myself over and over and over. I can't count the number of times I've been hurt. I've had surgeries from boxing. I should have had surgery multiple times and refused and fixed myself through holistic practices like chiropractic. I've, I've had MRIs on my neck that are like, yup, we need to cut your neck open. Vanderbilt telling me they need to cut my neck open. I'm like, no, 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 I'll, I'll figure this out. Thank you, I don't need your help with this. You know, but the crazy thing is, is that I finally, at 33 years old, I want to take the time to really do what I should have done a long time ago, and that is build the foundation of mobility necessary to be what I call injury proof. And I just want you guys to know, I am not, have not been injury proof. I haven't built the foundation of mobility, and I've probably spent a thousand hours working on mobility. So I guarantee you, when you come to me and you want to start lifting weights or whatever, and most of you dudes that come to me and you're bodybuilders and you think that you're special, right? You don't have the foundation of mobility either. I promise you, you don't. If I didn't, I know you didn't, right? So there might be some of you that are outliers or whatever, but I know all of you behind the scenes, even people that are watching this that are lifters or whatever, you've all been really hurt, like super hurt, right? I've been super hurt countless times, all right? So I have this amazing podcast interview I'm do this guy named Dr. Wes Hendricks, and he's involved with a company called Movement Fix. I'm completely hooked on Movement Fix. I've been doing their protocol, their programming, their calisthenics training in my gym. I absolutely love it. His story is very similar to mine. He's like an ex meathead now that's like just doing calisthenics training. And I mean, these workouts are so humbling. 
Like I'm doing body weight reps of these exercises, barely getting eight reps out. Like I'm shaking, I'm covered in sweat. I mean, guys, I can deadlift 450 pounds, okay? And it's just abundantly clear to me that even with those big lifting numbers, it's just time for me to eat humble pie, stop giving a shit at all about how much pounds I lift and these glamour muscles. How, mu how much does it matter to me to have biceps that I can move and pecs that I can bounce? You know what I mean? Like this kind of shit. So I really want to start to take a longevity approach to my physical training. That's what I want to do is just focus on, log on, lo on longevity because I never want to give up fitness. So I don't want to just be one of these old men with fused discs in my back like Sylvester Stallone can barely move, right? He's broke his neck a million times. It's like super stiff, right? It's time for me to be smart. So, I mean, I've got, I've got nothing left to prove to anybody in terms of me, nothing to prove that would require me continuing to be a meathead or continuing to punish myself. You know, there's just no reason. I've really been going through this a lot. And as you guys know, I've, I've talked to you a bit about like, you know, therapy. We've talked about psychedelics a lot lately. I've talked about inner child work and all these things. And I, I think I just have this habit of punishment. Like I am really, really good at punishing myself. And those are, I mean, I have my own demons to sort out too. Those are really deep demons. These are deep, dark demons and they, they, they are no joke, right? The same way that, that some of you women that I've spoken to, or I did my podcast with Trisha Nelson and we talk about some women are emotional eaters. I am an emotional exerciser, right? Like if I'm feeling sad or really worn down or like beat up by life or feel like nothing's going right for a couple of weeks or whatever, like in those moments when I should really sit down and like center myself and meditate or breathe or like I said lately, like do some inner child work, like in the past, in those tender moments where that's like really what I need to do, I would just go straight to the gym and, and punish my body to extremes that most people cannot fathom. I know when most people quit, that is not the time that I quit, right? It's, it's, it's horrific, right? And I actually caught myself doing this behavior like it was probably just over a month ago. I, actually, I remember the day. I remember what was going on in my life. I remember what I was going through and everything. I was just I was really, really upset about some just personal stuff. We won't get into that here. Like, So I was really upset about some personal stuff. So what I decided to do, brilliant Justin, oh, I'm super upset right now. It's time for a 24-hour fast. Right, so I do a 24-hour fast on purpose. I got to like 26 or 27 hours, and then went in my gym and murdered myself with glycolytic training for like 90 minutes. I can't even remember all the stuff I did. It's like I threw together like every painful power lift I could possibly think of for 90 minutes. Then I sat in the sauna for 45 minutes. Then I went from the 45-minute sauna into an ice cold shower on purpose, just because I wanted the extreme temperature difference. I didn't care about recovery, whatever. I wanted to feel it right? This is the same as emotional eating, right? I just went crazy on myself in a very, very not healthy way because I had some shit that I didn't want to deal with, right? So after that ordeal, I come out of the cold shower. I'm like, better go to the kitchen and make some food. My legs actually gave out on me. Like under, it was like somebody, like somebody's like standing with their legs straight. Someone kicks the back of their knee and like their like knee just falls out. Like I didn't hit the ground or anything, my my legs gave out of me. Like I was dizzy and all that. And I'm like, this is, I don't know where I'm going with this, but I'm now I'm just like being really vulnerable. So let's just dive in. But yeah, I, I had this moment where I was like, wait a minute, dude. <laughs> like my legs gave out of me. I'm like so shaky. I'm like, I need electrolytes immediately, right? And I actually started to laugh in that moment. But I was just like, damn, Justin, like there, there you are. Hey, buddy, I see, I remember you. I know who you, I know exactly what this is. I've been dealing with this for, for 18 years now. I know exactly what this is. So I remember you, you've got some shit on your mind that you're refusing to deal with. You got some shit on your heart that you're refusing to deal with. You're really avoiding it, right? So and I was at least able to have the self-awareness to see it in that moment. So I made myself like a big giant meal. I drank some pickle juice. I drank loads of water and electrolytes. I took some branched chain amino acids and I just forced myself. Like I took the night off from work. I'm like, I am not looking at the computer. I'm not doing anything. I think I, I think I watched like John Wick three or something. I'm like, I'm going to watch a movie. Um, took out my inner child book and like did some inner child workbook stuff, like just breathing exercises. I meditated and I'm like, all right, man, you got to dig into what this is. This is not cool. You can't do that. So like, thankfully I caught myself and that's what self-awareness really is. Like, of course you're going to go back to old habits sometimes, but I caught myself 
and I adjusted and I at least tried to give myself some, you know, some TLC on the back end of this really traumatizing ordeal, right? And guys, this is why I get so pissed off and annoyed when people like share David Goggins stuff. Like, okay, David Goggins, I get it. You're injured 100% of the time and you continue to run every day and tell other people that they should do it and suck it up and stop being babies. I think you're a moron, right? I, I really just do. I, I can't, I get so upset with Clovis people taking advice from like the David Goggins of the world. This idea of just like, kick your own ass. I'm gonna kick my own ass. Like, stop with that shit. It's not how a healthy person behaves. And I've done it for 18 years, right? It's no different from a heroin addict. Right? It's like I have friends who have done CrossFit open workouts. They have torn muscles in their quads. Like I've had friends have torn quads and they're like, but it's the CrossFit open workouts. I got to do it. Got to post time. And they do their workout for time and they post about it on Instagram with ice on both legs. Like did the open workout with my torn quads. Ma, ma, ma. This is not smart, everybody. This is anti-survival, right? And I get it. I've tested myself in unimaginable ways. Like I'm, trust me, but through martial arts and all the training and crazy shit I've done in my life, it's insanity, right? But I just think that as I'm getting older, you know, I'm 33 years old. It's not like I'm old or anything, but I want to learn these lessons now. I don't want to learn these lessons, like I said, when I'm 63 years old and fuse discs in my back or something. But I don't know. Anyway, anyway, I just rambled for like an hour about myself, <laughs> just talking about uh, calisthenics and how, how much I love calisthenics. So I am going to do this podcast episode um, with a guy named Dr. Wes Hendricks from Movement Fix. You can go to movementfix.com. I will say this. I mean, less than 1% of Clovis clients would be able to do the first 10 minutes of a Movement Fix workout. Uh, I will say that just, just outright. They're ridiculously challenging. Um, so I wouldn't start you there or still for most of you guys, I tell you to go to GMB, GMB, the element program is like exactly where to start. If you're trying to get into fitness and just build a base of mobility. Um, yeah, movement fix is really, really hard, but all right. Anyway, sorry. I just ate up like the last 10 minutes ranting about my own inner demons. Here we are talking about demons and me kicking my own ass. <laughs> all right. What do we got here? Hey, Jess, what's up? Welcome. Welcome to a Facebook live. What do we got here? Artina, after you challenged me on my isolation workout, I've turned to functional body movements as my go-to and have gained amazing strength. It's about function, not bulk. My joints feel better. My overall uh, about working out has been renewed. Probably just your psychology and working out. Is that what you're saying? The whole mindset. It, it's huge. I mean, I remember the first time uh, when I was a bodybuilder, I remember the first time that I was introduced to a Turkish getup by Pavel uh, Satsumin who wrote Simple and Sinister, and then I ended up training with the first, the, the strong first guys and everything. It's like, I could bench like 250 pounds or something at the time. And like the first time I held a 50 pound kettlebell up to like try to do a Turkish get up, my arm just went and fell behind my head. I'm like, I can't hold a 50 pound kettlebell up for a Turkish get up? Like what the hell? I thought for sure, like I'm Mr. Deadlift 450. You know, it's just crazy. It's a whole different thing. And what I have found is even in powerlifting, these compound movements that we're talking about, these functional strength movements, kettlebells are actually far more functional than a barbell. A, a barbell is somewhat functional, but like if you're sitting down doing a bench press, you're still, you're isolating many muscle groups, which is what makes it a compound move, but you still are isolating movements. There's not a lot of times in your life where you have to just push straight out forward unless you're like an offensive lineman in the NFL. Like that's why they test uh, bench press numbers on the, the NFL combine, right? So really you got to look at like what functional movement is. And if you really think about calisthenics, it's the end all be all go look at like, um, you know, gymnastics bodies, Instagram account or GMB's Instagram account or movement fix Instagram. account. Actually look up Dr. Wes Hendricks. Um, I think it's at Dr. Wes Hendricks. The things that this guy does with his body is staggering. It's absolutely unbelievable. So now I'm doing like a lot of handstand work, ring work, working on ring muscle ups. I'm doing a lot of handstand push ups. I'm doing um, a lot of uh, planche work and I'm doing a lot of isolated holes and Bulgarian rows with gymnastics rings. And it's, it's amazing. I absolutely love it. I never feel like crap after a workout. I've never even felt like I'm remotely going to get injured, not even close. It just, it doesn't happen, right? It's beautiful. So I'm going to be focusing on this, you know, for the foreseeable future for sure. And I'm going to get Wes on the show because Wes's story is actually really similar to mine. Like he's a ex CrossFit guy now. Um, so I think it'll be a beautiful conversation. And I think there are guys like me out there, like that story I just shared with you guys. I think there are a lot of guys like me out there that, that need this. You know, I mean, I grew up with Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger and I grew up getting in street fights and 
I was an animal growing up. You know, I really, I was getting street fights. I was 25, but it just, I grew up around that. I grew up very new England crime town, mafia town, tough guys, you know, and it's just, I had to start lifting weights at 15. Like dad wouldn't let me lift weights till I was 15 because it would stunt my growth or whatever, but we had a set in the basement. So then I turned 15. Now I'm lifting weights two hours a day and running on the treadmill and, you know, it's macho, 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 macho. I've kicked my own ass more times than I could ever count or ever care to ever again. Right. It's like, I'll kick my ass now with like a heroic dose of psychedelics and go deep within myself. But I think my days of like punishing myself with a barbell, I, I think they're really behind me. Um, I think, I think the world, the universe is kind of lining up in a way that's pointed me in that direction. And I feel really, really good about it. And uh, I'm having to let go of some emotional stuff because of the way that I look right. Like I, I like, I like these muscles. These are fun. I like these muscles, but I'm also learning that I can like keep these muscles and do that in a healthy way and, and really kind of find that balance there. So that's what I'm working on now personally. And I think um, that'll be a really great podcast. And Wes has agreed to come on the show. We haven't worked out a time yet. Um, so it's going to be some really great podcasts coming up here. So also, if you guys think of people that you want me to recommend on the uh, uh, that you want to recommend to me to get on the podcast, let me know. I would love to, to hear who you guys want to get me on here. Do you follow Danny Cavadlo also? They do crazy calisthenics work. No, I don't I don't know his name. Um, no, I'll check him out for sure. That sounds cool. I mean, it's just the calisthenics stuff, it, it blows my mind. It absolutely blows my mind because, I mean, like I really – I thought I was strong. Nope. <laughs> I mean, it's a whole different kind of strength, right? It, but it's it, – and how does it translate, right? Like um, Coach Somers from um, Gymnastics Bodies – the guy from Gymnastics Bodies, Coach Sommer, he's done some great interviews with like Tim Ferriss and I followed the Gymnastics Bodies program for a little bit. Um, didn't really love the programming, but anyway, um, he's talked about just how it translates. Like Pavel, Pavel Satsalin with kettlebells calls it the what the hell effect. Like you can take triathletes and have them not train triathlon events at all, no biking, no running, no swimming, and just train kettlebells for six weeks. They go back to their triathlon and their performance numbers improve. Whereas like triathlon training is never going to make their kettlebell swinging improve, right? Or so what happened is like Coach Somers would talk about this is that flipping the script, this kind of what the hell effect when you're really doing functional work, he would say like, you know, he's got these gymnastics guys that are doing like one handed handstands and all these crazy planches and these amazing straddle body levers and holds and all this insane stuff these gymnastics guys are doing. You send them into a powerlifting gym they'll deadlift three times their body weight with like no warm up, and they don't train deadlifting ever. They just like walk in, like, give me three times my body weight on the bar and they just like do a sumo deadlift or a strict deadlift or whatever. It's staggering how strong these people are. It's like, I wish, I wish that somebody would have got me into gymnastics when I was five years old, you know? But again, I grew up in the Northeast. You're a guy doing gymnastics, you can get beat up. That's, just, that's how I grew up. You know, I'm not saying that I did that to people or that that's correct or whatever. I'm saying this is where I grew up. I grew up in a small town in the Northeast. You know, I was like, you don't go do gymnastics as a boy. No, you get smacked around every day if you do that. And that's the thing. That's what a, a part of my psychedelic work and all this stuff that I've done is, is overcoming that. I come from a place of toxic masculinity. Like, I re, like, you cannot imagine the level of toxic masculinity. I'm telling you. Like, it was mafia town where I grew up. So, anyway. Uh, anyway, yeah, that's a weird spot to end on, but calisthenics are fantastic. Um, if you are of a higher, more advanced physical fitness level, then I can't recommend movement fix enough. It's, it's amazing. You guys may have seen some of my Instagram. I've been posting some of this stuff, um, on Instagram, doing some of this ring work stuff and things like that, and really working on this calisthenics stuff. And I'm going to keep doing that for the foreseeable future. I love it. I think it's fantastic. Um, so I'm gonna keep doing that calisthenics and sauna work. It's gonna be beautiful. So hope I answered your questions about uh, post-workout sauna. Talk a lot about hormones, female hormones, menopause. That's always fun for me to talk about, right? Because I should totally talk about that. Again, go read the work of Dr. Kelly Brogan. Cannot recommend a mind of your own enough. I actually want to get uh, Dr. Kelly Brogan on the podcast at some point, which I think I will be able to make happen. Um, want to talk to her about some really interesting Google stuff too. She's lost like 99% of her Google traffic from these algorithm changes against uh, natural holistic medicine or whatever, or, or, or nutrition advice, really scary stuff. But anyway, uh, that's it. So I have the, uh, Dr. Ken Berry podcast will be out soon. And then I have the podcast with Dr. Anthony J from Estra generation tomorrow. Thank you guys for hanging with me tonight. This is AMA number 87. Click the happy button, like button, love button, smiley face, thumbs up, all the things. Give me all the engagement, click the share button, share this on your timeline, tag your friends in this. Remember if you tag your friends on this one, they can see the whole video. This is all 
100 percent um public here on the Clovis Culture page. So do it. AMA number 87. This will come out as a podcast tomorrow. And then Friday will be in case you missed it. Then I'll decide when the Ken Berry and Anthony J podcast release. And I have like eight Just Justin episodes in the works. I've been writing like crazy, really writing a lot of Just Justin episodes, just different things that I've learned and want to touch on. So uh, partly because I picked up a creative writing practice as part of my routine, but that's just just a new thing I'm working on. Always, always trying new stuff, everybody. So thank you guys for being here. AMA number 87. I love you guys. Have a great night. Turn off the screens, turn off the blue lights, get some good quality deep sleep. I'll see you tomorrow in the Facebook groups. All right. Good night. Bye.